right now to this surprising discovery that is defying the laws of science. Uh, crowds are flocking to the small town of Gower, Missouri to view a Catholic nun's body that appears to show no signs of decay despite being buried for four years. The body of Sister Wilhelmina Lancaster, who died in 2019 at the age of 95, was exhumed from the monastery grounds so that she could be moved to her final resting place inside the chapel. But when her coffin was unearthed, this is what they found. Lancaster's body was apparently incorrupt, which in Catholic tradition means the body did not decay. CNN affiliate KMBC reports people have traveled from across the country to see for themselves. Powerful um, experience, very powerful. It's one of the most rare events in the whole of the United States. Not that old, but I've never heard of that in my life. <laughs> well, let me bring in Kelsey Wicks. She is the executive director for the ACI Group and has written about this for the Catholic News Agency. Kelsey, good to see you. Thank you for having me. So walk us through exactly what this group of sisters found when they unearthed, you know, the, the, the body. Well, it's really remarkable, uh, Frederica. When I sat down with the abbess, she said, you know, we, we began to exhume, exhume the body of our foundress to move her into the chapel. It's a longstanding custom in Catholic religious orders to have your founder, founder or foundress in your, in your chapel. And um, as they were exhuming her, there was a crack in the coffin. And so she took a flashlight, looked in, and she goes, I think I saw a foot. And she said, I couldn't have seen a foot. At this point in, in the game, there should be a great deal of decomposition. They were expecting to find skeletal remains. And um, instead, they found an intact body. So she said to her sisters, I found a foot. And they all cheered, um, knowing, of course, mm. what, what this potentially means in Catholic tradition. And so you actually went as well, right? You went to see for yourself. And you and a whole lot of people can see for themselves because she is out in the open. And what did you experience? I mean, it was remarkable. The level of detail, even the brand name of her sock was still vi visible. Um, the veil of her habit was made of the same material as the interior lining of the coffin. And that had decayed while the veil had not. Um, there was no smell of um, putrid or decay or anything of this. It was, it was just simply looked as though she had been dead for a day. Um, it was really remarkable. And, and so help people understand, you know, in, in the terms of Catholicism, what is incorruptible? What does it mean? Does she seem to demonstrate everything that it embodies? Um, there's, there does need to be a thorough investigation to make sure that this is um, in a, a case of an incorrupt body. Um, but what it essentially means is that there's, there's a lack of natural process of decay. And that points to a theological reality, which is um, that, you know, at, this, at, this, um, at the end of this life, there is something more. Um, and so people who demonstrate extraordinary levels of holiness within Catholicism often found to have these incorrupt bodies, which suggests that there's some level of closeness to the future resurrection that they might have. Is there anything more you can tell us about who Sister Wilhelmina Lancaster was? Yeah, she was um, 95 when she died. She lived 75 years uh, in religious life under the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, which is its own miracle. Um, and at the age of 70, she founded this congregation of Benedictine sisters. They're known for their chart-topping Gregorian chant albums, um, but they've also uh, now become known for, for the body of this woman in an unnatural state of decay and who is giving hope to uh, Catholics and non-Catholics around the country that maybe God is, is active. Wow. So, so what comes next for uh, Sister Wilhelmina? I mean, what, what will the process look like to determine if she, in fact, is an incorruptible? You know, what, what does it take to ultimately be declared a saint? Well, um, f first on the level of incorruptibility, it doesn't necessarily demonstrate the holiness of her life, although it could be a sign of it. Mm. So in order for her to be canonized, she'll have to go through a process that will begin after the fifth year of her death, that will go through all of her writings, her, her, her virtues, um, her life, to see if there's anything in there that is contradictory to um, the Christian Christian way. And then after that, she'll need two miracles, one miracle for beatification and one miracle for canonization. 
Mm-hmm. And this this miracle, if it if it is found to be um, uh, not as a result of any sort of um, fluke of the way in which she was buried or the the conditions within the ground, um, which it does not appear to be, would not count for either of those two miracles. Mm. And and what do you know about how she was prepared for burial? So the abbess told me, and it's been confirmed by the person who signed her death certificate, that she was not embalmed and that she was laid in a simple coffin and without a concrete sarcophagus around it and placed into the ground. And CNA did an, a series of interviews with morticians around the country, and many of them expressed their shock at, at the fact that a body that was not embalmed would be at this point of lack of decay. It's, it's rather remarkable according to those that study mortuary science. Wow, it is remarkable. That's why so many people are flocking there to see for themselves. And apparently, um, you know, there, there is a process that she'll, you know, the body will actually be, you know, going through this week, right? I mean, there'll be, um, you know, a, a rosary That's- involving, you know, her sisters. And what else do you know? So there, what's fascinating is there will be 20,000 visitors um, by the end of this weekend they are anticipating. So they've had to set up a whole meet and greet system. They have porta potties now on, on the property. There are people in lines, volunteers feeding them just to be able to walk through and catch a glimpse of, of sister's body and to pray in front of it. And um, on the 29th, the sisters will hold a rosary procession and mm-hmm. then they will formally Um, move her body into a glass enclosed enclosed case and um, put her final remains inside the chapel with the sisters while they wait to build a shrine to St. Joseph where they hope to bury her. Wow, that's incredible. And then potentially other things could happen within the next year, because you mentioned the whole, you know, fifth year after um, one's death, potentially the process of canonization if it comes to that. So, wow, what a journey. Mm.